Music Cat Liddy Mondays, Liddy Mondays, Liddy Mondays. With Jazz It Cat Liddy Mondays, Liddy Mondays, Liddy Mondays. I know you were looking for something, maybe you'll find it right here, baby. A Make Your Own Trophy Records Ooh. production. everybody welcome back to musicality mondays i'm your host jazzicality thank you so much for listening whether you're listening on the podcast services or if you're right here on the youtube channel today we have rapper and singer yana the moon cricket can you tell everyone hello yeah hi y'all how's it going <laughs> hey, <love that. laughs> hi um it's good to be here i'm really excited hey. again like i said i'm a podcast virgin so i'm really hyped yeah. like, let's go Ooh, okay. So the first question I was actually going to ask was about your name, but then I was watching Radio K and I found out the reason behind the name. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, well, I feel like on Radio K, I actually didn't eloquently okay. say, like, state, like, exactly what Moon Cricket means to okay, me. Yeah. And I feel like just like when I first moved up north. Like, okay. I got culture shocked so bad wow. that I kind of lost my identity. Okay. So, moving back down south, when I went to an HBCU, I actually, <laughs> I connected so closely with my blackness. And, like, Absolutely. I just feel like the best way to reconnect as well is to yeah. reclaim a slur. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. So, yes. yeah. So, that's that kind of, so cool. yeah, that's kind of what I wanted to say. But then I was like, I sound so silly. Like, <laughs> Oh, you're good. Um, huh? But yeah, no. So um, when me and my friend were talking about it, I was like, wow, that's actually it's just so pretty. I can't get over that. And yeah. like, yeah, girl. So Moon Cricket just ended up sticking. And I've actually yeah. had like a list of stage names before then. They Ooh. were garbage. <laughs> so it's really fun. Do you want to talk about those stage names? Or do you want to? Sure. sure yeah. um, my you? first one as a kid, and I used to lie to people all the time. Be like, yeah, my real name is Nicole. What's my middle name? <laughs> Oh, we've been having a lot I of know, moments that's now. So weird. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's insane. Yo, yeah. Blues Clues? Okay. Yeah, Blues Clues. Because the handy dandy notebook. I called her that before she got here. And it's and actually she the same it. color. Uh, it was he was, it was like green, wasn't it? Like a greenhouse. I, I, I remember like a red chair, but like. Red chair, green notebook, right? And then he had the blue marker or a blue crayon. I'm going to say yes, because I can't, oh, no. I don't, it's like, I can see Steve right now. I can see the real Steve, too. The real Steve, not the Because who's freaking, the other dude? He's a doppelganger. Not even, he's a duplicate. We didn't yeah, want yeah. him. No offense to that guy, but Steve was Pack that dude. Up. Pack it up, buddy. <laughs> Cut the cameras. <laughs> no, but did you see that blue, <laughs> blue talks now? Really? Yes. Why are they changing our, like, childhood? Blue, or maybe blue doesn't talk, it's the magenta one, and then there's like okay. a rainbow. Oh, okay. Blues clues now. It's a lot going on. Okay, anyway. Think, yeah, look, yeah. Back to the point. That's so funny, bro. Um, yeah. What was the point? Oh, yes. Uh, the what point was, some of your stage yeah, names? we've been having moments. <laughs> Honest to God. Like, but yeah, Nicole Jones was my first one. Okay, wow. <laughs> Not gonna I mean, be honest. Right. <laughs> it was um, my second one was Talee Miller. Okay. And that's because, like, my mom was seeing this dude at the time who I thought was going to be my stepdad. It's actually really sad. Um, oh my but, God. <laughs> no, um, he's not. But I ended up adopting, like, his last name and just using one of my middle names to go as for it. And sure. Yeah, I thought it was super fire. Ooh. Yeah. It, it didn't fit. It didn't yeah. stick. Um, okay. And then once I started kind of journeying into, like, my music, it's kind of woke, positive blackness. You know what I mean? I so that, I was yeah. like, Moon Cricket. Yeah. yeah. Vibes. But... I do occasionally walk into white people who are, like, aware of what Moon Cricket is. I was going to ask you, do yeah. you have difficulties with that? Hell no. Nah. I feel like, I hope you have a hard time saying my name, actually. Oh, no, I mean, like, yeah. black people. Like, why would you, like... Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Black people have definitely beefed with me a little bit. They've yeah, been like, yeah, you sure you want that to be your name? I'm like, yeah. I was low-key going to be like, do you want that? I'm pretty <laughs> but sure. But then I found out that you knew the meaning of it. Yeah. And it was really cool to see how you just, like, flipped the narrative. Yeah, because it's like, how many times are we just going to allow ourselves to be controlled by a label or word yeah. or stereotype, X, Y, Z? You know what I mean? Like, at some point, it just becomes a book in a dictionary or urban dictionary, wherever you be. No, literally. It, but, but literally, just like, you got to take the power away from these people who keep yeah. trying to demolish your culture. Yeah. 
erase that. You know what I mean? Erased like they, they erased the entire history I and wrote say, there no, on and forced us to they, learn they, it. They oh, okay. Wait, oh God, no, it's I'm, so terrible. We, we get system. deep. We get deep, but like That's that, okay. I, they forced us to learn Speaking their history truth, and you know? didn't even left out all the ugly stuff that they were doing for oh, real, for my real. Gosh. Like <laughs> it's just like you can rewrite someone's history and destroy them you know what i mean that's, like that's true. native americans live on the outskirts of everything because so they destroyed true. their history their culture their livelihood yeah. and black people be they get the little bit of rights they get a little bit of freedom and then just be chilling like are you kidding <laughs> me <laughs> like stop that take yeah. it back take I mean, it back yeah, yeah. I, I agree with you in that okay. yeah. well, but, a little tangent. <laughs> no it's okay but i, I want to say like um your, the name Moon Cricket, like before I knew what it meant, because I just found out what it meant when I was looking at your, you know, everything. Mm -hmm. And I thought it was so pretty. And then I'm like, oh, oh no. Exactly. <laughs> it's dark. It's dark. I'm just like, oh my God. But yeah, yeah. no, you, you learn a little something and yeah. you get to, to hear your beautiful voice. And I'm mm -hmm. just like really getting into your music. And I'm just like, oh, you sound fire. You know, like you really have something, you know. Ew, that's Absolutely. So sweet. Um, actually. <laughs> When white people want to say my name, they end up doing Yana the MC so oh. that they don't like disrespect me. But it's like, I. It's I, your I, name. I, I'm, it, it's actually, that's even worse. It's my name. The MC. Yeah. But, but you at are the end MC. of the day, yeah. 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 You know, so I, 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 I let them be great because. Yeah. You let them be great. You, you, ah. can't, you can't fight with them all the time. But it's Moon Cricket. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 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 oh my gosh. Oh my that's God. so great. Thank you. Um, and so, when did music find you? Young as mm -hmm. fuck. Um, it's kind of like growing up Jehovah's Witness. We always had like a moment in our kingdom hall where we would like sing together. Okay. And like I found myself always trying to harmonize with people. And the one of the sisters I used to learn under her voice was so magical, just yeah. beautiful, like operatic. And I'm like. Yes, every time I heard her, right? <laughs> so, like, at some point, I kind of asked her, I was like, how did you get there? She's like, I always sing in choir. And I was like, oh, I could sing in choir? Like, that's right. a thing? So, <laughs> at the school I went to, I found out we had a choir, and you had to, like, kind of audition, but not really. And um, if you audition, though, they'll, like, send you to sing with the state choir, right? Yeah. But if you don't audition, you're just in there for class. Um that's when I kind of just was like, oh, like, I really <laughs> love this. And I really, really love classical music. Yeah. Like, wow, it's okay. so beautiful. So I started singing. And um, I always hear from everybody else that I wasn't a good singer. But I feel like people was lying to my face, okay? They was just like, don't don't get your hopes up, friend. You ain't got it. Because, like, why did they tell me I sound like a screeching cat? That's so Under rude. a car. Like, like, they was dead seriously on my booty, bro. <laughs> <laughs> That, yeah, uh, to this day I'll mm -hmm. talk to my cousin I'll be yeah. like why did y'all hate me so bad when I was singing he's like bro you did not sound good I was like oh, okay you're like, oh, okay got you okay <laughs> but the only person who really really had my back was my grandpa oh, because no matter you. what even though everybody said I couldn't sing like I was writing music at this time like yeah. at this point I was like nine seven or nine seven or nine, seven or nine. <laughs> yeah I can't remember quite but I remember it was after Hurricane Katrina okay. and we had our trailer at the time and when I wrote my first song I showed my grandpa it was about a highway yo like yeah <laughs> I was like a highway is going my way there you go <laughs> like some stupid right <laughs> and I showed my grandpa and he was just like this is bomb this and is I was like cool <laughs> I was like really yeah. yeah and so he was just like you should keep writing you should just keep going like yeah. and um literally like i don't know like since then it's just been like just elevating me like yeah. i've been through some super traumatic stuff through my whole life so like yeah. doing singing like and any kind of music elective was kind of like how i just like expressed myself and ran away from a lot of things yeah. so yeah music's just always stuck with me since so, so yeah would you say that your grandfather's ap approval just helped you like be resilient oh yeah dude my grandpa was bomb he was so <laughs> cool like <laughs> so is your music literally like, thank you <laughs> <laughs> like he was a severe like severely hardworking man mm -hmm. like he never gave up and even when he got like like he his back went out with his job he was still in the office he was like i'm not gonna, I'm gonna do my job like he's one of the hard working <laughs> southern men and I, wow. I always admired his grind and like how he would always like 
treat people around him with nothing but respect and love and like he was just such a cool person to look up to and I think like his positivity like rubbed off on me so much because I was like if I want it I got it Mm -hmm. I'm gonna get it I want it I got it I Mm -hmm. want it Mm -hmm. I got it Mm -hmm. I don't really know Ariana's lyrics, but I love her bad. I love her bad too. Mm-hmm. In the world goes bad, you know. I'll be saving my love for you. Be you. No, she ate with that. She so ate. bad. <laughs> she ate. What advice, like, would you give to up and coming artists or just like artists in general of how to, you know, block out the naysayers and like keep going? <sighs> there's gonna be a lot of no's out there. You mm-hmm. hear this yeah. all the time, and there's gonna be a yes that motivates you differently, like. And there's going to be another no, and another no. But that yes is going to stick with you for mm-hmm. so long that you believe that, right? And it doesn't matter if you're delusional or not. You know what I mean? <laughs> you can have garbage music, but still make it. We see this all the time. We do see it. But you can also have incredible, powerful music that changes people's lives. And, yeah. like, you can see that around you. Like, yeah. I when I first moved here, got involved in a lot of spaces that were actually very toxic for me and like didn't motivate me actually made my depression worse. Mm -hmm. And like, just like, I don't know. I felt very stagnant for a while. And then I come across my band. I come across, I don't know, like other people who are just like so incredible and so open and Mm -hmm. their heart is just of gold. And this just seemed like when we all met, it just Mm -hmm. clicked you know what I mean? And then you also get, and it depends on woman and man, whatever, having your community, the brotherhood, the sisterhood. Yeah. It's so, it's, it's like mandatory to have. I oh, will yeah. never say I'm a self-made person. I refuse to claim that. <laughs> I would be nowhere without my homies. I would be homies. nowhere without my sisters. I would be nowhere without the cats, the dogs. All right. They all contribute to my well-being and i'm I know talking you, about animals i'm talking about my animals thank yeah. god okay i was just like okay we're we still talking about yes yeah, like- so we're talking about yeah we're talking about my kitties shout uh, out alice and jasper no one else gets a shout out <laughs> <laughs> just the cats uh, <laughs> that's amazing honest to god i was like uh, okay that's the cover right there <laughs> shout out no but seriously like those are all this motivating aspects for me and um i just feel like you need to find your sanctuary within those spaces and just keep moving because even the last month i felt more motivated singing and i haven't Mm -hmm. been super confident singing in a really long time okay so like literally like that wouldn't happen if i wasn't in backward drift actually okay like yeah me and charmaine yeah and she just like she's so like her voice is so powerful and so oh, beautiful yeah. and i know when i first started i was like oh man i just don't want to embarrass her because she's so Aww. good right like i i need to be really good support if i'm gonna be her background singer and so we have like a, a one-on-one vocal rehearsal and she's like oh, yeah. you know your notes yeah I, I need you to be confident like you know this you're really good and i need <laughs> I you to know that and i was <laughs> like I am. Yes. <laughs> She's like, yeah. And I'm like, oh, okay, okay. I'll let go then. Like, I'll relax. Like, because, like, we've established a sisterhood behind exactly. the scenes, too. It does. So help I was like, okay, so I trust you. Like, yeah. I trust you to be really honest with me. And I know for sure that she wants to also perform her best. Mm-hmm. So she's not going to lie to me. Not Ain't nobody yet. about to let you walk on stage and sound crazy. You know what I mean? So I love that she was just really real with me. And yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> just find your so find your place. You know? that, that is really good advice, actually. Because. Yeah. I um, personally, like, didn't find the black community until, like, like two or, or three years ago. Mm-hmm. And I found them, actually, through um, the Legacy Building. Like, they had their opening oh, yeah, in 2022. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And then that's when I found where the black people, like, hang out. And I'm just mm-hmm. like, I don't know, like, where I was, like, eight years ago. I was just, you know, I went to music school. And, like, there was more diversity in that school. It was Mc- McNally Smith down the street. Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, it closed down. And then I was, like, all I had was my fiancé, like... And I, you know, he's white and right. like, and that's fine, but I wasn't finding what I needed and I didn't mm-hmm. know that I needed to be with black people, my, my people, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. When I found them, I was so happy when I found you, when I found, uh, like Jimmy and like, <laughs> oh my God, I love Jimmy so bad. <laughs> he's so sweet. Mm-hmm. Uh, Rottweiler, of course, cause he's part of the yeah. legacy building and so tight. Like I just, like that's what I'm saying. You meet yeah. incredible artists. Exactly. 
who make you feel part of the family part of the in family the, in the music scene and like not and uncomfortable that literally not uncomfortable not like uncomfortable. i'm like, an extrovert i saw this meme <laughs> where it was just like where the extrovert in you plans to go to this event but the introvert in you is the one that pulled up oh yeah oh and you're like you're like why did i come here yeah yeah so that's how i was when i first went to snapped open mic right and wow. they're beautiful black Love. like community that like host like an open mic yeah but when i pulled up <laughs> i was like oh wow it's yeah it's a different kind of feeling yeah i was like whoa like there's some big dogs in here like That's actually an and like i was like stressed instantly because so, okay. i've been to a bunch of open mics before and, it was, and like, different. literally <laughs> um i've been to open mics before where it was just like a little it was less less people there for okay. one so, oh, yeah, so the 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 stress is a little less there, you know what I mean? Yeah. The anxiety's not there for real. Yeah. You can relax. I brought my 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 freaking yarn and my crochet needle. So you know, I was ready to just kind of yeah. chill. But because there were so many people there, I got overstimulated instead. So Same. I ended up still chilling in the corner crocheting because I was like <laughs> like <laughs> so I yeah. I I thank you for saying that cuz I felt weird to feel like that, but it feels more like Oh, I gotta have my whole performance ready, and all these are some real musicians on yeah. stage right now. <laughs> like, Dude, like people from New Ad- New Edition, I think we're in there. I'm sorry, what? New Edition, the uh, <laughs> no, I know, but like, I'm oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> my bad. Not me over here explaining my. Mind. No, it's okay. <laughs> like, no, I was like, don't what? Yana explain to me. No, I was kidding. like, whoa, Yana's playing is freaking hilarious. Thank um, you so much. <laughs> yeah, coined it. <laughs> But yeah, no. When they um they were there, I was like, I c- definitely can't sign up and be oh, garbage. Man. Like I was just so stressed instantly. I know. And you don't know these people. Exactly. Yeah. But it's it's like also cool. To, like, did you ever sign up afterward? Oh yeah, I Good. ended up See? singing at some point. Yeah, you know yes. what I mean. So it's just like definitely. Um, also, it helps to bring again your sanctuary with exactly. your people with you. Cause like <laughs> when I first walked in there, I was not trying to get to know anyone. I don't know what it is, but like, yes, it was just like there was just something about it that felt like up here. Yeah, you know, like oh, this is what the vibe is. The tears, the tears, the tears. in the room. Yeah, and I'm kidding. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was definitely, I felt like a newbie for sure. And then the more you're there, the more you see people, the more you yeah. pour into people, the more exactly. they pour back into you. And then boom, you know what I mean? Yeah. Now you're good. And I yeah. really think that's the biggest thing with minnesota like creative scene Mm -hmm. there's not enough people who authentically pour into you that's true so that you feel adequately like supported yeah and then you feel comfortable enough to also be honest and pour into someone else you know what i mean it's it's kind of just like i'm walking on eggshells sometimes but i have met some people and i'm just like oh my gosh i love you like can we be family members (laughs) 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 oh my gosh but I think I think also I I did end up performing there and people were really nice you know before do you ever like have that thing like where like nobody talks to you but then you perform and then people come up because like they've seen what you can do or whatever that's how it was kind of like and I do like that there are black people in there setting that standard mm-hmm. I think that's incredible but like yeah it's uh, uncomfortable at first but but like they're incredible mm-hmm. we're incredible we're going mm-hmm. in there we're doing the damn thing. And, like, just the, the band that's there every week, like, they know what they're doing. Yanni, specifically, like, mm-hmm. you know, like, um, I had to talk to him first um, because, um, you know, he's the one who tells everybody what to play on the chorus. And, like, mm-hmm. he had my back. And I'm just, like, Thank he, you. yeah, right. He only listened to the song for, like, 20 seconds. And then he's just, like, okay, this is what we got to do. And I'm just, like, sir, could you teach me how you did that? Yeah. You know I mean? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Like, oh, my God. Artists who could be doing that, I'd be, like, ooh wow like yeah. i'm just like that's literally how my band is that's what i'm saying yeah i'd be sick like and like half the time i'm beefing with them because yeah. i don't care how smooth you is with it right. all right we go right. in some rehearsals all right yeah. <laughs> 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 they're definitely like yo we got this we got this this is some mm-hmm. chill it's like no nah, i don't care i don't care but they do be having it they, they, do, yeah. they be on there they be on it i'm never that's gonna awesome. tell them that to their face just kidding i sometimes tell them it's too late no i'm kidding yeah <laughs> <laughs> This will be the only time they ever hear it. They can play it back or whatever. Yeah. Um. um. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait. Uh, do you want to introduce your band to the the people who might oh, not yeah. know? Oh yeah. So in my band, I got Gavin on the bass. I got Frequency on the guitar. I got Wayne on the keys, and I got Jimmy, my boy Jimmy, on the drums. And it's actually just magical. Like, Good. Yeah. Super. They they treat my music sensitively, which is Good. really like. 
what Erica Badu said. I forgot, actually. I'm sensitive <laughs> about my shit. That's all she yeah. said. Something and, like that. And I could feel that Ooh. through the way that... <laughs> I could feel that through the way that you're explaining it um, on the interview that I watched. And I'm, I'm glad that you've found people take the time to, to hear you out and just be like, oh, yeah, this is something that's special. Let me exactly. let me put something mm-hmm. special on it, you know, mm. Type shit. take it seriously. Exactly. Take me seriously. Like, mm-hmm. I feel like when I started music, people were like, oh, this is going to be like a nice little hobby for you. And I'm like, hobby? no, this is literally my life. Why are people so like, mean to life you? Goals. Oh, my gosh. I I don't know. I've never talked to you like that. No, like, genuinely, <laughs> I think positive people get like punched in the face regularly. <laughs> I feel that on a personal level. <laughs> I try to be careful. Right? Like, let me just actually have a stink face <laughs> from now on. Like, you're right? never going to talk like, crazy to me ever again. Like, I'm just like don't. There's a lot of joy stealers out there. Out there. there are. Yeah. And like before yeah. I found our community, that's all it was that that's all it was i never felt comfortable mm-hmm. you know like i found comfortability kind of but when i found the black community i was just like oh my gosh, oh my gosh yes. yeah. why <sighs> yeah I'm, I'm with you i'm just with you I, I, just, I didn't know what i was missing honest to god like and i i thank my mom for that like she's my mom slash manager and um she's like you gotta find your people dude and then i did find the legacy building before she moved here but it was the same year she moved here and then we she was like my best friend. Oh, she is my best friend, and Love we just that. went out to places together. And people know Mama Heather, and they like they're like, "Say hi to your mom for me." I'm just like, "Oh my god, this is my dream come Literally. true." She moved here, and she's part of the community. And like, I want my dad to get out there more, but like, she's like Mama Heather to everybody now. And that's I'm just like, beautiful. I gotta meet Mama Heather. Oh my god, Hello. she's gonna love you. You just have yeah. this like energy that's so beautiful. Oh my so. gosh, thank you. Yes, yes. <laughs> my mom's like my best friend too. Yes. We were not best friends growing up. Me and my mom beefed, all right? <laughs> <laughs> she that, was also another mm-hmm. person who was like, you should maybe stick to writing. And I was like, no, I'm oh going to sing, gosh, mom. So I'm going to freaking sing. And she's like, I just don't want you to get heartbroken. That's where mm-hmm. she was at. She was like, I she don't want you to have you. a dream that may or may not be attainable because yeah. it's a hard field to be in. That's and I'm true. like, I don't care. I'm making it. Like, you yeah, see, yeah. I'm trash at math, all right? Yeah. I'm not making it in any other field that really makes money. So math you need to let worst. me be great. You just need to let me be great. You just, need to, just let me know this. That's all I got. That's all I got right now. I can that's, read that's and all write. I have. And maybe solve a couple of science questions. You know what I mean? Like, Tell me why the job I have now is like solving like math problems that are like beefy. Not the tiny ones. The easy ones. The beefy ones. I'm falling asleep. But I'm grateful, Jesus. Don't take it away. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> now you're looking around, period. <laughs> right. Don't, no, don't honestly, take away my blessings, Lord. Please. Yeah, no. Um, I'm a nanny right now. I ain't got to solve shit. <laughs> Most I got to do is tell them, hey, go use the bathroom, bro. <laughs> like, and then go take them outside. That part. Yeah. That Teach part. them a little two-step a little bit, you know. Just then. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Could you talk a little bit about, um, the you know, the juxtaposition between nannying and, like, your dream job you know like performing Ooh. you know well i'm not even gonna hold you like okay i know i say music is my life but that's yeah. like not my dream job oh what's your dream job oh my gosh i've been learning that um music is just so stressful to okay. like have scheduled like shows and get a rehearsal in and honestly it's a lot it's a lot it's a lot. whole situation um but my dream job is actually be a real estate agent Oh my gosh. Like a really good one. Okay. Like for luxury housing. And I want to go around the world and like <laughs> tour houses and wow. show people how fancy somebody else got it. And then once I make a decent amount of money on that, right? Yeah. I want to open like a bunch of children's shelters wow. and like resource centers for homeless kids. That's incredible. That's, <laughs> that's my future goal. You're just like, actually, let me, let yeah. me tell you really quick no, what I really want to do. That's <laughs> what I want to do really bad because, like, I was homeless as a kid and I seen how rough it is and, like, being unstable here, here, here and just not having all the opportunities that you could have presented to you yeah. because you don't have that space. And so, like, yeah, I just want to offer it. You know yeah. what I mean? I want these kids to have it. I want, like, homeless parents and, like, families mm-hmm. to be able to send their child somewhere and then they're gonna get adequate care they're yeah. gonna get equal opportunity and even get stipends you know what i mean yes and be able to just like live a little bit more comfortable than how they have it you know what i mean because yes. homeless yeah. shelters now even with families they'll serve you some expired food man and like it's not good like yeah like 
Listen, I've been through some stuff, but like seriously, <laughs> like it's like everyone deserves basic needs. Yes. yes. Um, housing, fresh food, fresh water, mm-hmm. hot water, cold water if they want it. Please, like literally, yeah. clothes on their back. Yeah. Clean clothes on their back. You know what I mean? There was weeks I went with dirty clothes. Had to be that smelly kid, and it is what it is. You know what I mean? Like I don't want any child to have any form of like embarrassment towards something that should just already be taken care of them yeah so yeah something i want to provide so i mean if i end up making big on music that'd be cool that'd be cool right. then i can shoot for that goal a lot faster and then maybe yeah. be a real estate agent at some point you know what i mean but like yeah. real estate is something i want to do really bad like yeah. okay so it's kind of like they're kind of right next to each other yeah in like in yeah. my i would know a lot about i do know a lot about like how housing works and like cool yeah you know deals and all that good stuff but like yeah, yeah i just want to get my license <laughs> that's amazing yeah. yeah so did this um so were you homeless after hurricane katrina is that how it no. happened oh my oh, okay. gosh my life story is crazy so, so, did you want to tell um, us about <laughs> a little bit hurricane katrina happened when i was like five six okay so um i only moved around a little bit in that time i didn't move up north until i was like 12 okay and crazy it was nuts i will mm-hmm. say for sure um and it was within going into like my sophomore year that i went i was homeless okay even before then i was in a homeless shelter with my mom um in middle school because we okay. had moved somewhere and then we came back and shit just didn't work out and so yeah like we were in a homeless shelter for a while then i remember while i was in that shelter all the food that i was eating was so processed and garbage and i was so depressed and i was eating my feelings like you know what i mean and like i was like 200 pounds in eighth grade okay not even eighth grade seventh grade and, seventh grade. and then so we had like this end of the year video that i was like oh ha, we get to relive you know whatever and we all went and watched it after school and did it or whatever and i remember seeing it and it was me and this other girl were like the biggest kids i've ever seen in my life on this video and i was like ain't no way that's me <laughs> like i had this smurf <laughs> shirt on and it's just like <laughs> bleh, bleh, bleh. i'm just walking around like i'm like what the f- that's me bro like no way and i was pressed out i was so upset and I just starved myself in the, oh, like no. having like a lot going on, right? Yeah. And no kids should have to feel this way. No. But during that time, I was also going through housing changes okay. left and right. So like my eating disorder was getting worse. My depression was getting worse. And then like, again, I didn't have that resource to a therapist for real. Okay. Yeah. Like everything was happening all at once. So I just yeah. ended up joining a lot of clubs at school. Like I was like, all right, basketball team. All right, track and field. You know what I mean? German club. Drama club. Do you know how, like, there. when somebody's telling a serious story, but the way that their face is moving is just like, how am I not supposed to laugh right now, bro? No, you can definitely Take laugh. Because, like, <laughs> in hindsight, like, I was just this extra obnoxious-ass kid because I just didn't want to go home. Like, I mean, that makes in sense, reality. You know? Yeah, so, like, literally, where I found my true love was acting. I did love acting. Ooh, but... Okay show choir show choir is where you get to apply acting dancing and singing together and it's the best thing on the planet and i was like shut up this is so cool and all my show choir directors were like my favorite people on the planet that's awesome yeah Yeah, literally so cool like and so yeah that's when i was homeless (laughs) (laughs) You know, um, yeah, no. <laughs> but during that time, I found, like, a lot of people I could depend on in oh, show choir, okay. too. Like, some of my friends in there. And, you know, I lived with their family for a little while. Okay. And then I ended up living with my other best friend, um, who, uh, she's the one who put me on to alternative music. Oh, yeah. That really shaped, like, how I wanted to attack music. Like, Panic oh. at the Disco is one of my hugest inspirations. Shout out oh, yeah. to Brandon Uri being problematic himself, but... <laughs> <laughs> but like still like the song structure like mm-hmm. it was so incredible yo freaking halsey oh, yeah. the like dark grungy vibe i was like what like <laughs> this is crazy and then another artist Troy Sivan, had this song called um bite okay that song is so like haunting like the vocals on it were just so beautiful and then like i just started seeing like how i could take 
this classical training, all the stuff that I had going on mm-hmm. in the schools, like I can change that to sound like I don't know, magic. Yeah. <laughs> and I so love that. yeah, like that was just kind of sparking me and like motivating me while I was a homeless kid and whatever. And then I ended up with my foster parents. I like to call them my fosters. They weren't okay. really a foster parent, but there was like another program that I was okay. in to get like people to take care of me. And like, yeah, like they were all for my music, but also wanted me to be realistic and be good at math class. I don't know what's my problem, but these anyway. Pe- these people have got to start just being supportive. <laughs> yeah, just be more supportive, bro. <laughs> yeah, literally. <laughs> but yeah, no, like that whole experience was just crazy. So that was all through high school. I was just wow. like struggling with like housing and yeah. So, I mean, this is probably obvious, but like, did that shape who you are today? You know, like. I think so. I okay. feel like that's why i'm just such a like resourceful person because like if i hadn't had like people looking out for me right didn't even know who i was for real they just knew i was this energetic obnoxious fun kid you know what i mean and had like the world like had something to offer to the world and so people were like oh well, let me help her give it to to the world. Let me make sure she's good. You know what I mean? And so me knowing about these resources, I'm like, I'm not going to watch someone else go through it. What is the point? Why are we here if it's not to love on each other? That's All right. Yes. So I was like, yeah, Thank nah, you. bro. I'm about to pass on the word, pass on the love, pass on the energy. And like, hopefully people see the light at the end of the tunnel. I know? see it. Oh, wait. Sorry. I see but, the light on you. Right. <laughs> a nice light you got going on it. I'm just that kidding. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, that's really beautiful though. Cuz some people you're right, like some people would take everything that they've been through like, you know, the world's against me and then just want the same thing for everybody else. Yeah. It's just like pu- pushing them down. Well, that'll be fine. I turn out fine, but you're just like, no, it's like, if no I didn't you have to go didn't, through it. Right? And you're actually still struggling mentally. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like, relax. Like <laughs> everybody needs therapy. Everyone needs help. <laughs> Everyone needs a hug. Oh, that's true too. Like, even if you don't like being touched, so there's someone who can give you a hug and you're like, mm-hmm. <laughs> you're just like, well, thank goodness they know. They exactly. Know me. Or like, some family members. I'm like, no, you're giving me a hug. Sorry. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's, mm-hmm. but no, that's really beautiful. I knew I saw beauty in you. You're just telling me about it. Wait, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Your face is just like, what are you doing? <laughs> that's so funny. Oh, yeah, so. <laughs> <laughs> did you, did you go to college? I did Alabama a and University. Shout out to my HBCUs. Oh, that's right. You said you went to an HBCU. Yes, I did. And I almost didn't go. When I got out of school, I made a decent score on my ACT. Ooh. But I was like, forget school, bro. I hated it. <laughs> <laughs> like, I know I was I was that kid. But like, no. yeah, no, I genuinely just didn't want to be. Oh, I mean, like in a bad way. I was that kid. And I was like pretty popular. Like, oh, well, well known didn't like to be well known oh yeah. sure yeah but like in general it's just like yeah like i was just like i don't feel like doing school all over again yeah. it's just not my vibe and then but i did want to be a music teacher that's what i was going oh. to school for um i don't want anymore but <laughs> but yeah i went to hbcu didn't graduate but got a great experience good lovely experience i learned a lot about my culture mm-hmm. learned we had a national anthem uh, uh, allegiance you know what i mean like just all types of things i was learning i was like what like oh, you didn't know it's tech- okay. yeah i didn't know anything about it. i didn't know anything about greek life and like just how they hold themselves to a different standard yeah. like i just love that we were like oh oh <laughs> like there's classism in um, america oh but then there's gosh. classism in the black community and i know that sounds there terrible is. but at the same time it was also so eloquent there's for no me, okay. I said, oh, okay. oh, we got royalty. <laughs> like that's what it felt like. Greeks felt like royalty to me. Mm-hmm. People who were like incredible singers and who just knew their stuff. Like that was royalty to me. Like yeah. I was like, oh my gosh, like I want to strive to be just as royal as my blood is. You know what yeah. I mean? And so yeah, I just wow. I don't know if I had not went to an HBCU, I would still pro- might be having an identity crisis. Like. Oh, wow. Because I came from very black neighborhoods, mixed mm-hmm. neighborhoods, actually, just like white folks, you know, some Hispanics here, you know, whatever. Everybody's yeah. in the same community up north. Ooh. Ooh. It's a bit chile. Like, <laughs> literally. Just a bit. And there's white folks everywhere. I was like, oh. I think it's going on. And they would always correct my accent. That was another problem. I Wait, just. Huh? 
yeah like i had a really husky southern accent right i love that those are beautiful lost to me. It. Like, lost it. These people would correct everything I said. Oh, and right. Like you were 11 and 12, right? Yeah. And they mm. would act like they didn't know what I just said. But I'm like, you knew what I said. <laughs> now you want to get fought. And I ain't got hands. Because I've never <laughs> had to fight a day in my life. And it's like, <laughs> what is wrong with y'all? <laughs> Literally, what is wrong with y'all, bro? That's, you know who that reminds me of? Glorilla. She like says burrs and like whatever. Yeah. But now it's so fire. It's so fire. No, because that's. Mm. Oh, by the way, for the record, I'm not still Jehovah's Witness. I was oh. raised Jehovah's Witness, but I'm not anymore. That's hilarious. Yeah. Yeah, I I was Side wondering. Note. So so you're from Mississippi, right? Mm-hmm. That's when you say down south, you mean Mississippi Deep south. Yes. And then um, you were Jehovah's Witness, but are not now. Mm-hmm. What was that like to to be Jehovah's Witness and then to transition out of it? So on a real note, being in the community growing up. Yeah. I thought it was a beautiful place because yeah. we had congregations. Everyone's this is a really tight knit community, but then mm. you kinda learn. So and <laughs> when you are raised in those environments, you don't know what's happening. Yeah. And yeah, then uh, once like, you know, stuff happened and I ended up moving up north, I got excommunicated because mm-hmm. you know, I open I opened up about some things that they felt that a child shouldn't have said. You know what I mean? Oh, okay some really dark trauma oh. and they were like oh why would you ever do this to your brethren and sister like we gave so much to you and it's just like in reality you might have given me the space i needed to grow up mm-hmm. healthily but not mentally or emotionally you okay. were there phys- for my physical needs okay like my basic needs but it's like there's a lot more that goes into raising a human oh, okay yeah. you can't raise someone to be submissive their whole life that they can't open their mouth about their emotions okay. or they feel judgment from god yeah. you're weaponizing god they- <laughs> against mm like my human experience right. when he's created me to have this very human experience and to have free will you know what i mean yeah. like how are you pre- preaching this to me that's, and you're taking it at the same time that's so sad and that's something yeah. i started to notice like yeah. growing up in that community and then i went to this place called crossfire mm-hmm. um in lacrosse wisconsin that's where i moved to and it was more uh, i want to say it's like evangelist okay. um they would kind of they would kind of go over the word a little bit mm-hmm. at the beginning of it but it was like a teen center really okay for troubled kids and also kids who just wanted to hang out and just do whatever mm-hmm. um but yeah they were open till like 11 at night oh. like they were super cool like just a nice space to be in yeah. and i met some lovely people there who ended up being my foster parents you know oh, okay. I mean? okay um and i went to church with them for the first time and was so terrified. Oh, okay. I thought, like, the mm-hmm. way Jehovah's Witnesses raise you, you feel like you're going to walk into a church and set f- ablaze the whole building, okay? Like, like a different kind of church. Did, did Jehovah's Witness go to church? They have a kingdom hall. They like to call it the congregation. You know what I mean? Okay. But in reality, it's still a place where you're coming and singing. Oh, okay, know, okay. Whatever. But not like a traditional church. Yes, okay. not like a traditional church. Um, So, it's three things i went through first was terror it's like full terror anxiety mm-hmm. right like i was like oh my god i'm gonna die like from being here like I, i'm crossing yeah, god i've been there i yeah. have like, it's so scary it's <laughs> such a scary experience but then what i realized what i was feeling was my body releasing anxiety wow because i have been so tortured yep. <laughs> and like boxed in like spiritually yeah. and once i was releasing I was literally just sobbing the entire time during service, like just could not stop. And so what happened was my, um, my foster mom at the time, she took me to go get a prayer in the prayer room. And the next thing I felt was freedom. I got to tell this lady a lot of stuff and like just breathe as I was like getting this all off my chest like I was hyperventilating at first I was very stressed I was freaking out and then she was just talking to me and then praying over me and like how oh my god this is another thing like (laughs) when the the Holy Spirit is in you you know how they give you a prayer yeah and it slaps it does slap you be like oh (laughs) what you ate actually you really ate you didn't even know what you was talking about (laughs) <laughs> but you ate. What's five plus and three? Eight. 
<laughs> What's four plus four? Eight. <laughs> okay. Anyway, but yeah, no, like they really, really like opened my eyes to what spirituality was, which also opened my heart to accept other spiritualities like Buddhism. Like if I was still Jehovah's Witness, you're going to hell. Doesn't matter. That's so weird. That's what I learned. Okay. okay. You are not of God. <laughs> we There's not multiple gods. Okay. There's only one. Like, and then there's his son like you know what? listen <laughs> <laughs> listen they can go on and on and like you know you have roles specific mm-hmm. roles in that religion and so like in evangelism mm-hmm. it's like there's no designated roles to how the spirit is going to move in you you know what i mean like wow, there's okay. the worship team yeah. there's the prayer rooms there's the the community builders who are like providing you all the basic needs you need there's children's ministry there's literally so many places that you can be in and they accept you for that and they want you to be in in that environment so that you are also giving back or also just you're just building into your church community that's okay. really what it is and i felt so loved mm-hmm. i felt so loved for the first mm-hmm. time in like a, a, a community like it's just it's not always been like that i had never felt like i could go to like my partner like the other like children's ministry teacher and just talk to them about stuff i'm going through like really sensitive stuff like and it just feels like they're not gonna judge me or they're they'll give me advice you know what i mean or they'll you know guide me to scripture like there's not people who just always do that for you Mm -hmm. and like you don't have to worry about them the reporting you to an elder you know what i mean like what is you know what i mean if if they're gonna t- if they're gonna offer you advice and they don't have w- the words for right. you they'll pray with you and be yeah. like hey you know i know someone who probably went through something similar you should speak to this person i feel like they're very wise like and there was no judgment there it's really cool how god was there you know yeah. and that you could recognize him even after everything that you've been through i really understood omnipresence for the first time in my life and what was crazy was um even when i went into college i met a girl um i went to barnes and Noble. i worked at barnes and noble with oh, right okay. and she's the one who first gave me the book jesus calling right mm-hmm. and getting a daily affirmation mm-hmm. like supported with bible scripture was just like such a beautiful thing for me and that was another eye-opening thing because i didn't have a church home there and okay. i still don't have a church home here but what was so nice about it was I could still carry on his teachings and yeah. feel it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Like, and breathe it. Yeah. You know, and walk in it. You know what I mean? Like, it's different when you know officially your relationship with God. Yeah. Like, and I feel like I went through all these steps to understand my <laughs> my part yes. with God. So, yeah. Because, yeah, I'm just like, yeah. wow, you've been, yeah, you have been through <laughs> so yeah um i definitely feel like he has me here mm-hmm. to show others what I, I always say this he wants me to show others what god's love is and oh, i yeah. really feel like i'm definitely one of god's kids you okay know, like he yeah you, you know what i mean and you're not always right and i think yeah. that's what's so great about it because it's not gonna be a perfect relationship exactly and people are always trying to strive to be perfect and that's weird uh, yeah people <laughs> what do you want that for i don't know you're supposed to be here to do imperfect things to learn from those imperfect things yeah. and then move on and you know what i mean be better because be a of better them. person yeah. no one said be perfect person after right. this they said just be better people are so weird with that yeah because it literally says no one could ever be perfect but god but every time you do something wrong they're just like that's not what god would want like that's not what you would want but god said that we're cool mm-hmm. like <laughs> Like, we're fine. Like, I messed up. I learned from what I did. Now Jesus is going to move on with me. Mm. You know, he's never going to leave me. Ever. Like, you you may leave me, but he ain't never going to leave me. Amen. Amen. And he ain't never left me. Ain't never. Ain't never. I'm 26. You're 26. (laughs) Like, you know what I mean? Like, mm. I love talking about God with you. Like, you're. I I love, yeah. Like, I I can just tell he's, you know, he's with you. Always been with you. He's with stuff. Always will be. And even in presence of people who are non-believers. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. Okay. That, Isn't it though? I, I do be looking over like. Mm. But yes. at the end of the day, 
even though they might not believe in him, mm-hmm. he's still working. Right. With you. Do you ever like hear him say like like right next to you? He's like, don't worry. We're, we're fine. It's fine. You can still talk to them. Right. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Like, like you're little, so like, cool. It's, it's all good. Because yeah. no one, like God's never going to like just place you around people mm-hmm. who are just going to steal your relationship with him. Right. Because they can't steal They can't. They can't do that. that. Exactly. Like, what you believe in will not get stolen from you. Like, there's nothing stronger than God for for me personally, y'all. Yeah. You know. Faith is a beautiful thing. It really is. I just had this conversation with people about just, like, how faith is probably the strongest power in the universe. Like, we have love, but you have to have faith to believe in love. Yeah, because like, how are you gonna like trust that and trust? How are you gonna trust you in order to love? Faith and you know, right, to, to have to have all that. It all ties you know I mean? back in together. We all worry about having trust issues. You got a faith issue, all it, right? Because it, it starts with faith in a way. Mm-hmm. So you know, I'm gone. I'm gone. No, same. So I'm <laughs> for the viewers. I'm gonna <laughs> <laughs> for the viewers. I'm gonna shift into our new segment. Mm-hmm. This has only been done twice, and I still owe someone a T-shirt. But you will get a T-shirt if Ooh. you get at least one question right. But I'm still gonna give it to you anyway oh, because I, go. you know, that's just how it goes. So the purpose of trivia is for Ooh, trivia. yeah, it's it's um musicality Monday's trivia, but it's also um trivia about minnesota and like things that you can learn about it Oop. music trivia you know okay but this podcast is sponsored by my llc make your own trophy records which is um an llc to help musicians in the community and this show is a perfect way to do that so i thank you guys so much for letting me introduce that but we're gonna play trivia oh shoot hold on my game <laughs> are you ready can you name the difference between a condenser mic and a dynamic mic? So I feel like a condenser mic is for instruments, yeah? No. I mean, I think I think you can use it for that, but so like let me do it like this. Okay, so is a condenser mic more for recording or live performance? Recordings. Yes. Yes. I feel like dynamic mics are something you need to make sure the vocal quality is when you're performing for sure. Like the vocal quality is clear when you perform. Yes. So yeah. so um one example of a dynamic mic is like an SM58. That's a standard. Have you used that one before? Do you know if you've used it before? Okay, okay. It's like, I don't know if I have it. No, I don't have one here. I got a smegular, degular like, mic at home. I ordered regular. it off of Amazon. Said vocal mic. <laughs> Click. Like, <laughs> listen. Wait, wait, wait. I'm going to show you one. I don't even have that MIDI box yet. Like, I got like. So, um, oh, that's actually an interface in it. That's it's, what it's an called. interface. Oh, I love that. Okay, perfect. See, I know a little something. Yeah, yeah. So, so. That's right here um, for the viewers at home and for Yana, of course. It's a dynamic um, mic. This is a dynamic mic. Um, it's uh, my vocal mic. It is a an E935 that I got as a present a little while ago. Maybe years ago. Uh, I have no idea. Wow. Sennheiser. No, no. I just. Oh, no, it was the part about you just getting it forever ago or versus just recently. Oh, you know, okay. I got you. <laughs> no, yeah. I, yeah. And I'm. Totally like it's got a nice b- blue yeah, hue to the top of it. I think that's I know, super right? cute. Yeah, no, I love that. Yeah, it, it's for, I think, I can't remember right, but like it really helps with like deeper tones or something, or it makes it sound like a deeper tone. That's the vibe it gives off. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, the standard uh, that everybody uses and throws around and like anything could happen to it is the SM58. <laughs> so, so this isn't, these are... These are podcast mics. These are dynamic mics. No, these are, I don't know what they are. Condenser mics, I think. <laughs> like, you can record with them. Like, I don't know. But I'll let you guys know. I like you can do some recording with it. I think so. Yeah, like, as, as far giving. as, like, singing. I accidentally, uh, for one of the um, interviews, one of their performances, like, they were using this instead of that one right over there. <laughs> was, oh, like, oh, oh, wow. They Did just it kept it. Good? Yeah, it sounded fine. Oh, and I was just fun. like, okay. So I so think it's yeah. a condenser mic. 
there we go absolutely so you said that you've been dabbling with bass is that mm-hmm. still true to this day yeah i still play bass and who is teaching you is it Matt frequency that was te- frequency yeah. okay mm-hmm. i'm just like oh yeah he has a stage name frequency yo don't tell me your government i will goof it up real bad it's in hilarious. like front of people i'll be like oh this is this is this frequency day like. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah. Um, okay, so can you name, wait, how many strings does a bass have? Oh, four. Okay. Well, it can have five. That's true. <laughs> what are the names of those four strings in either order? E, A, G, B, or it could be D. Hold on. Go on and try e, again. E, A, G, I think it's D. So the last two are mixed up. It's E, A, D, G, but I didn't know that until I Googled it. And wrote it down here, so <laughs> frequency. Don't watch this. <laughs> right? Like, <laughs> she's still learning. Don't judge her. Whatever. No, he's definitely gonna roast me for that. <laughs> <laughs> it's like mm. <laughs> I be working on the E and A string most of the time when we're in right, our lessons, like, it's so it's like just the like beginning yeah, stages the and everything. G- so. yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, you say you- GD. You know what I mean? <laughs> GG. <laughs> okay, I'm stop. So you're are you also dabbling with guitar and piano, right? Um, I played piano growing up. Okay. I'm not the best at it anymore because I don't practice. For sure. And it's really hard. It, it's oh like gosh, right. it's not really hard to maintain. It's really hard to find time to practice piano when you're like doing so many things. That's hard. Once. Yeah. So, I, but yeah. I do sell my guitar. I still be going a little. Sum, That's sum, good. Some some. Yeah. Sum, sum. Ah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not like intricate with it, you know. Yeah. Don't don't book me. Don't book me. So you don't perform uh, with the guitar and sing at the same time. I used to okay. a lot. That's but cool. like, yeah, I kind of like when I was introducing myself into the black spaces as a musician, I ran into a lot of people who just performed over tracks. Oh, for so sure. So it was just kind of awkward to be walking around with my instrument and just be like, okay, I get hey, it. Guys, I I'm do like get that. An indie black singer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what are two radio stations in the Twin Cities that you can perform on as a musician? That you could perform on? Think about it. Okay, well, Radio K. Yes. Ow, I just totally beat my teeth in with this. Um, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> okay, so Radio K and then The Current? No. I don't, you, I don't know if you can perform in there, but I, I don't know. Don't quote me. I don't know. But Okay, well, I've also performed oh, on, um, well, I'm about to with uh, DJ Drunken Monkey. Oh, sweet. Okay. Oh, oh, Tweak Central Live or something. Yes. Yes, indeed. Okay, y'all. I don't. I don't know what channel it is, but I was on Tweak Central Rat Live. I got you. Shout I'll out to Boy Drunken Monkey. Uh, I just want to name one more for the viewers out there. Uh, also, in oh, was that the right answer? Yes. Yes. Oh. By the way, you are getting that shirt because you got at least one question right, and I was gonna give it to you anyway. Mm. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 I was gonna get no. <laughs> Uh, another one uh, that I've performed on is KVSC Radio in St. Cloud. Oh, do you do website design? I do. Can you tell us about that? Well, you want to know about JavaScript or something? Sorry, what? It's oh, like, sure. Yeah, yes. a, little, a little tech talk. A little something. Um, tech talk, yeah. So actually how I started on web design was, um, you remember back in middle school, they have you do like National History Day? No. So it's like <laughs> some super... <laughs> some super nerdy stuff y'all like yeah, literally cool. um i was in a bunch of ap classes and the first thing that they oh, would yeah. do when you're in a push is like oh you gotta do something for national history day and you're like uh, <laughs> like here we go a project like <laughs> and i just refused to want to like i didn't want to do a group project so i was like oh, you know what gosh, i'm yeah. gonna do something that i don't have to do that with mm-hmm. and so one of the things was radio hosting like you can do like a project and then pretend like you're like a radio host rep- reporting wow. on the whole thing. Yeah, that me. So cool, <laughs> so cool, right? Yeah. But then I saw that you can make a website, and oh. so I decided to do the history of women's basketball on the website. So nice. Yeah, and I got third place, dude. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I was. Mm. I was like, <laughs> maybe I'm not bad. <laughs> no man. No, 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 no. So then from there, I just kind of just started helping a couple of my friends with like their websites for their small businesses, and wow. then um. I don't know. I just like kind of learning more and more about coding. <sighs> if I do go back to school, I feel like 
coding mm-hmm. something around software de- design is just kind of somewhere i would be in just to get like a, just a little flimsy little four year you know, whatever but i mean you know my goals like just yes, getting do, random degrees is just money? like just something to tack off on the life Honestly. quest i don't know side questing for forever but um Honestly, yeah <laughs> literally yeah like coding is a lot of fun um it's like learning a different language but i bet nerdy language you know some um yeah so Oh yeah, but very cool. Because I, you know, when I was stalking you, I found that I'm like, oh my god, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I just be doing stuff. <laughs> yeah, it's incredible. Sorry. Go from tech to now we're crocheting together. You know, cute. That's super cute to you. <laughs> married to me. We're lot. married. Um. Yeah. <laughs> oh, y'all don't know about that. We got married at a, a ice house show. <laughs> yeah, randomly it's with a ring pop. With a ring pop. It was, it was so delicious, cute. by the way. Thank you. Yeah. I. A great ring pop. Received it from someone, like from a, a baggie party bag, a little special baggie. And I was just like, "Do you want this ring pop?" And then, like, yeah, sweet <laughs> 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 <been> so much. <laughs> <laughs> you were so sweet. I was just like, "Thank you for yes." Um, <laughs> vibes. Um, name one way you can connect with other musicians. Ooh. There's this app called Vamper. Oh. It's like okay. Vamp and then there's an R at the end. And you can literally just talk to like random artists in the cities and they'll be like, Hey, I got a gig coming up, you wanna like connect or whatever and whatever. Oh. And yeah. I mean I've talked to some people through there. I didn't meet anyone because I was also like there's a lot of people on my Instagram like, Oh, let's do this. Let's do exactly, this. yeah. I was getting booked for shows and I was like, All right, I actually don't have the capacity or the space on my phone. So I'm sorry. Um <laughs> you had to get deleted. Um <laughs> but yeah. yeah, no, there's really cool people on there, very friendly. Um and yeah. Also just travel. Just you travel. said state one, but just travel, dude. You'll run into all types of cool people. And it's very cool. Yeah. Yeah. That was great. You gave two answers in one, Instagram and Vamper. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Daddies. Um, <laughs> um, name two ways you can book a show. We just talked about two ways. Oh, to, to book a show. To book a show. Yes. I have no idea. You don't. I didn't even try to perform for the rest of this year. I, my goal was to release the EP. That's right. And just be friendly <laughs> <laughs> network i suppose because yeah. random people will be like hey i need you to do the show for me <laughs> i need you to do that's crazy you know work with a live band they're gonna yeah. definitely be like oh you should do this show and you're like hey so you trying to eat my cereal bro no for real because it's just like <laughs> i would rather right now rest but i have to do this yeah like i've definitely definitely been one to just relax but i've been getting booked um that's the, incredible though. The one the one show I thought was gonna be my last show for the season. <laughs> <laughs> so you thought I get booked for like two more shows. I was like, oh, um, oh. But yes. I'm really adamant. This winter I'm not going outside. Like I'm about to release this EP next year. It's happening. Yes. Yeah. Cause I yeah. That isn't that always the way it goes? Like you make this plan and then you know, or it's like just kidding. Things change, yeah. Real quick. Yeah. <laughs> if you're if you're new in town, what's the best way to get acclimated to the music scene? Like how do you get into it? That's a great question. Thank you. Because it took me three years to find okay. where to go. Um, I would say go to the dance studio first. The dance studio? Yeah. Go to Hot House. Meet some people <laughs> who like dance for artists. Wow. Wow. Yeah. And when they say they got a show, go to that show. That meet is- people there. Vibe with people. And... Once you're kind of involved with two different communities of art, you kind of feel introduced to a good half of the scene. That's um, amazing. Minneapolis is really small, actually. It, like, it is. It, it felt big when I first moved yes. here, but then I was like, well, I know everybody. Like, this and is that person or that person, they're like, oh. Yeah. And so, wow. like, and even when it comes down to, like, wanting to get an opportunity to, like, show up and show out, you know, being in those spaces with people like they're really friendly and they'll really like put you on so yeah. like yeah that's kind of like how i found my way into it absolutely yeah. okay i love that answer yeah. i was gonna say go to open mics but that is an incredible answer open mics can be sparse a little bit like that's with true. people like yeah. people definitely lean towards more just live live music versus open mics true. but there are open mics that be on and popping Okay. like snapped <laughs> snapped 
Um, yeah, Lenora no has the Horizon That's Sun right. one, super fire. Poetic Mama has Mama's House at Heal Minneapolis. Cool. That, that's okay. like incredible. And that's for like poets heavy. But she also loves musicians very much equally. <laughs> but like poets be in there wow. doing that thing. And I'm like, that yeah. Thing. Yeah. There's there's also poetry slams too. Go oh, there. Good. Vibe with them. They also love artists too. They just they don't want you to take the space to start like randomly singing or whatever, but definitely so just definitely be inspired by like their words of wisdom and their yeah. pain. You know what I mean? Like mm. ain't nothing more motivating than watching someone like pour their pain into like po- like poetry and then like also moves you because like, you yeah. feel you feel their rhythm. You feel the vulnerability to share that. Yeah. And like, yeah, I feel like once you see people be vulnerable, you're a little bit more. It's true. I definitely felt that. I love mm-hmm. that feeling. I love your answers. I'm like, thank you. This show is for me too. I'm learning so much. I'm just like, <laughs> I'm like, thank you. That's that such is. a good, <laughs> such a good answer. Because I feel like, um, I mean, obviously, I know me. I know what I've been through. Mm-hmm. It, it's so the way that my mind is being opened by my guests is just so crazy. Because mm-hmm. I'm just like. Because obviously you've lived a different life and like you got here a different way. So. Yeah. I got yeah, here so through a lover. Like what? I moved to the cities because I thought I was in love with someone. And then okay. I also lined up a job and moved here and just took a chance. And then mm. I was like, oh, <laughs> like I was actually kind of on an isolated island. Like I didn't oh. really know what I was walking into. And like because the community can be very clicky, mm. like the people I first met when I moved here were not my friends. You know oh, what I mean? Yeah. Like, so, yeah, like, finding yourself in the space. Yeah. Really important to just look for open-minded, mm-hmm. like, communities. Like, the arts, like, like actual art mediums, like, painting and stuff. Like, uh, yeah. you can go to, like, St. Paul, um, Walk of the Arts, whatever. Walk they have, like, arts? an art crawl. Or? They have an art oh, crawl okay, down okay. there. And that's also a really cool environment to just walk. You literally walk into people's houses because really? they have the doors open to all the artist lofts down there wow. you just walk in start chatting start chatting wow. be friendly you know what i mean yeah. again don't invite your introvert right. <laughs> self to these spaces but definitely walk in when you're feeling it and just be like hey you know yeah i like what you do what inspired you can we connect for the last question could you please tell us what would you what what do you want to leave the audience with as you know as far as who you are and what you'd like to give to the world there's a really corny saying okay that our school was like our slogan and the school's not open anymore but um slogan was good better best never let it rest to your good is your better and your better is your best right yeah and i feel like i always think about that when i had a good day right yeah yeah I'm like i had a good day today i could have a better day mm-hmm. and then my better day comes and i'm like hmm, it's not my best day but it was better <laughs> than last week you know what yeah I mean? yeah and i'm grateful for that and then a moment that is like one of those um key memories core memories you mm-hmm. just created with people right yeah that's one of your best days and yeah. the highs from those are all the same they're all the same you still feel incredible what no matter what yeah. e- no matter if it was a good day better day or best day you still have that high of like it's good it's, it's just it's great i'm grateful i'm happy and when you don't have those days never beat yourself up because your good gets better and your better becomes its best and your best is always attainable i love that that's that's very yeah it's like a wheel of happiness a wheel of happiness (laughs) every time i get to this part (laughs) you ever watch hot ones yeah i always think i want to roll the red carpet out for you (laughs) you know but i always try to like put my own spit on it so um when's your next show what do you got going on what do you got coming up my next show is at zora darling this friday the 25th the show starts at seven (laughs) <laughs> it's okay this will don't be out hold after me, it <laughs> don't hold me i also have a show showcase it's called ghetto bitches yes and it is to retake like to take to reclaim the the phrase ghetto like who 
who the fuck you talking about anyway like really in reality those are just people from neighborhoods marginalized that neighborhoods yeah. that's where so, i was like those are people from marginalized neighborhoods who have a stereotype that that's keeps so true. following them when black women I mean, there's also Hispanic women and Asian mm-hmm. women inc- included on this project, but like black women particularly are always at the bottom of the totem pole when it comes to having respect, mm-hmm. equal opportunities, freaking, we're getting judged on our freaking attitudes instantly. And we're so some annoying. of the kindest people I've ever right? met in my life. I've never met black women who are just not just beautiful on the inside. That's I mean, amazing. there's a couple, but like still well, at the end of the I day, think. like overall like we have a stereotype that doesn't make sense and it's because we're fed up right it's because we're fed up to that point are you serious like how much and that's why you're seeing that point you're only seeing that point how much grace do you need right from me when you're the one putting me in a hard position you know what i mean like it just does not make sense it's just like what the fuck like black women put up with the craziest shit and are some of the strongest women when they deserve to be soft they deserve to be in spaces where they feel delicate and you know that's something in my music that i try to like (laughs) also like push like we do not have to be the strongest women on the planet Oh my gosh. There's no reason we need to be. Help us. Like, what do you help. mean? You're so strong. I, like, I love, I love people, but like, sometimes I'm like, no, but you can help me though. Like, I don't, Yeah. Like, I, you, you can help me though. Like, I accept help. help. I, I welcome it, actually. Actually. I can't do this alone. Ever. I'm not trying to. I like, why should I? Me. You didn't have to do it alone. You know what I mean? Right. You like, why should I? Why should? Because I ain't yeah. no stronger than you. Like, let's, come yeah. on. <laughs> like yeah so 100 percent. like ghetto bitches is gonna be on november 9th that's um, yeah that's on november 9th and me and my bands will be there i think that's all i have do you have anything else that you'd like to say hey mom period oh man um uh i just dropped a music video oh, yeah. so please if you have youtube i, I hope you do please yeah um yeah go show it some love it's a little vibey vibe it's actually like a little mini movie and that was filmed by um the honey bear collections shout out to him too um yeah and if you got all the music platforms i'm on all of them yana the moon cricket okay follow me on instagram yeah oh it's why the moon cricket my bad oh that's right (laughs) wait but but on Spotify, you're Yana, and then on yeah. Instagram, you're Why the Moon Cricket. Yeah, because people are always like, Why the Moon Cricket? Why Why is that your, I love that. your name? Look at you always just changing the way that <laughs> things are said. <laughs> like, what is going on? They think it's for Yana the Moon Cricket, but like, nah, it's because people it's always ask why. me why. Thank you, Yana, for being on Musicality Mondays. Um, make sure you guys go follow her at Why the Moon Cricket on Instagram and at Yana the Moon Cricket on uh, streaming platforms. Yeah. All love right. you. Love you. Bye, guys. We'll see you in the next one. (laughs) Bye. Music cat, Liddy Mondays, Liddy Mondays, Liddy Mondays. Jazz it cat, Liddy Mondays, Liddy Mondays.